Hi, Pat Donner from ICBF here. We've put together a series of short videos explaining how the ICBF Gene Ireland Progeny Test Programme works. In existence for over 20 years, the ICBF database is now the largest cattle breeding database in the world with over 2.5 million genotyped animals. Gene Ireland is the name we give to the Progeny Test Programme which is run in conjunction with Irish beef and dairy, pedigree and commercial farmers, AI stations and breed societies. Gene Ireland is made up of four parts. The first is where we generate the list of bulls from the database based on their indexes, their ancestry and their genomic information. These bulls are then inspected, selected, semen taken off them and this is put out into Irish herds for progeny testing under real life Irish farm conditions. We evaluate the progeny of these bulls then for all of the traits that will be of importance to Irish farmers. Calving, weight, growth and obviously all the carcass traits, not to mention milk and fertility of the daughters of these bulls. There are a lot of traits, however, that are difficult to measure. They're new and novel, such as methane emissions, milk and fertility, and feed conversion efficiency. We bring a sample of progeny of each of the bulls here to the ICBF progeny test unit in Tully to performance record them here. The final part of the program is that we estimate the genetic merit of these animals based on all of this data, their ancestry and genomic data. We rank them then under indexes for Irish farmers to go on and use their semen in widespread use. With all the focus on stars and data, it's very important though not to forget that the quality of the bull, his functionality and how he looks is of utmost importance. What the ICBF database brings to the table though is that there's a lot of traits nowadays that we won't be able to tell what the bull's progeny are like from just looking at the bull. For some of the terminal traits you can do that, you can look at the bull and say yeah he's very good for muscle, very good for weight gain and his progeny will generally do that. However for some of these other traits such as feed conversion efficiency, milk fertility and the methane emissions we need data recorded on their progeny to then see which bloodlines are doing well in these traits. Hi, I'm Niall Kilrain from ICBF and we're here today in the Tully Test Centre in Kildare to talk about the Gene Ireland Breeding Programme. A key part of the Gene Ireland Breeding Programme is that we assemble a panel of high index bulls which are made available to farmers twice a year in the spring and in the autumn. So those bulls are provided for the programme by the AI companies, the breed societies and ICBF also imports semen from high index international bulls to contribute towards international genetic evaluations. We distribute 500 straws of each of the, these bulls. Some of the straws go into dairy cows, some of the straws go into suckler cows. And we subsequently capture on farm data in terms of inseminations, calving records, live weights. Some of the daughters are then kept for breeding and we gather data in terms of the daughter fertility and the daughter milkability. Finally, we also purchase some of the progeny of these bulls for the Tully Test Centre here. We aim to purchase somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 progeny from each bull and we record difficult to capture traits within the research centre here. So all that data combined goes into the ICBF database and that allows us to get a very accurate genetic evaluation on these bulls as quickly as possible. The key principle of the programme is the repeatability of it. What we're looking to do is every year identify and assemble a high index panel of bulls that has potential to drive profit at farm level and that each year the average index of those panels is increasing year on year. So as part of the breeding programme we take 20 progeny from each AI sire of interest into the centre here at Tully and all the animals are, are housed indoors and we're really after three key pieces of data. The first piece of data is feed intake. So we use these instant tech boxes that you can see beside us, these blue boxes, and they record every feed intake that the animal has. And every night then it records the, the feed intake for that animal within a given day. And that's a key piece of information for us because that feeds then into the genetic evaluations for the terminal and replacement index. And we know in the terminal index feed intake has a 16% weighting and in the replacement index it's 18%. So it's a very important piece of information to capture uh, in terms of evaluating sires out there in the industry. So the second key piece of data that we record on the progeny of the Gene Island bulls is we look at their methane emissions. So we have green feed boxes that actually collect numerous greenhouse gases. It looks at ammonia, nitrous oxide, uh, carbon dioxide, but methane is predominantly the one we're interested in because it's the most potent gas and it's 28 times more potent than CO2. So today we actually have uh, records on 1,200 progeny of Gene Island bulls 
and that information now is allowing us to assess the heritability of methane and we know already that it is actually a highly heritable trait so we can select animals in the future that can reduce uh, the greenhouse gases of our national suckler herd by identifying the key bulls of interest. Uh, what we're seeing to date is a difference within breed of 20% between progeny of the same age and gender uh, for methane emissions. So that's a key difference and a key reduction that can be made through breeding. And then the third key piece of data is that when all the animals are finished their test period in Tully, which is 90 days, uh, they then go uh, to be slaughtered in an abattoir. And during that time then, we cut the carcass into 24 uh, cuts of meat. So we can actually assess then the meat yield and the individual cuts coming from each of the progeny and then collate that back to their sire. But more importantly, we actually look at eating quality. And we do a number of predictors of eating quality. One be it that we actually scan the loin of the animal uh, using ultrasonic scanning. And that gives us an assessment of the meat eating quality by looking at the amount of marbling in the meat, the amount of subcutaneous fat. And it also tells us a predictor of meat yield on the animal. When the animal then moves into the abattoir then, we record things like the pH of the carcass, we grade the carcass then for, for marbling when it's ribbed or quartered. And then when we're doing our full carcass dissection, when we're taking them 24 cuts of meat, we take the right hand side of the strip line and we cut it into individual inch thick steaks. And they go for sensory analysis, both consumer and trained panels. And what they're doing is tasting the meat, looking at traits such as tenderness, juiciness and flavor. And currently, uh, we have an index for, for meat eating quality, which is available in all AI sires in the industry and will be available for all sires out there, stock bulls, etc., uh, in midsummer.